In this video, I'm going to explain about DC motors, including an animated model showing how they work. I won't be showing you how to create a motor driver, but I've already covered that in early videos showing how a H-bridge works and how to use PWM to control the speed. I'll include a link to those at the end if you want to watch them after this. You'll find DC motors in many projects, including model railways, robots, and pan and tilt features on a camera. The model railway typically uses a brushed DC motor as does wheeled robots. In this case, it has multiple motors controlling the wheels. A robot arm and the pan and tilt for the Raspberry Pi camera often use servo motors. There are also stepper motors, which are useful if you need accurate control of the motor. I'll be explaining more about those in future videos. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on the traditional brushed DC motor. Before looking at the motor itself, we need to understand a little about how electromagnets work. I won't go into details, but essentially, whenever a current flows through a wire, then a magnetic field is generated. So imagine this is our wire. A DC current flows towards us, with the distant end being positive and the near end negative. Then a magnetic field is generated, as shown by the rings. It is shown as rings, but in reality these would extend the full length of the wire. By creating a coil of wire, we can create an electromagnet. The wire is normally wrapped around a ferrous metal core, which helps increase the electromagnetic field. As shown in this diagram, the electromagnet will have a north and south pole, just like a permanent magnet. The direction of the magnetic field can be determined using the right hand roll, as shown here. First, let's look at the anatomy of a standard brush DC motor. This will be useful for the explanation later. Note that this is simplified. It shows just a single winding for north and south and a pair of fixed magnets. In reality, most motors will have multiple sets of windings, but this will help keep it simple for this explanation. On the outside, we've got the two fixed magnets. Typically north is shown as red, shown here on the right, and south it's shown as blue, shown on the left. These magnets are fixed in place. They are part of the stator or the stationary part of the motor. The central part is known as the armature and this is the part that will turn. In this case it's shown as what appears to be two sets of windings. In reality this would be a single wire but it's shown in this way so that you can distinguish the north and south pole. The wires, which are these here, are connected to brushes. And the brushes provide a way of connecting power to the rotating windings inside the motor. But it also energizes the appropriate windings as the motor turns. Here is a 2D version of that diagram, just showing the magnets. Opposite poles attract and like poles repel. So when the motor is powered on, the motor will start to rotate to the right. It will continue to rotate until the electromagnets of the armature line up with the magnetic fields of the stator. And thanks to the brushes, it will then change polarity of the armature windings so that it will then cause the motor to continue moving. Now, this is simplified and quite a basic example. In a real motor, there are often multiple sets of windings making this much smoother. The motor will continue to turn around trying to align the opposite poles. And we're now back at the starting position and so now the motor will continue to turn. This will continue to rotate in the same direction. If you wanted to reverse the direction then you would reverse the polarity of the voltage, effectively reversing the polarity of the internal windings. To achieve this change in direction then you need to change the polarity of the power reaching the motor. And this is best achieved using a H-bridge. I've already created a video which shows how to use a H-bridge circuit to change the direction of a model railway. See the links in the description for more details. To change the speed of the motor, you can increase the voltage. This increases the strength of the magnetic field, causing it to move faster. In the same way, decreasing the voltage will reduce the strength of the magnetic field and it will cause it to move slower. 
If you want to control the motor using a DC output, say from a Raspberry Pi or a microcontroller, or by using a fixed voltage supply, then pulse width modulation provides a way to use a digital output which can be similar to varying the output voltage. I've already covered this previously on my video on using PWM for speed control. See the link in the description. There are other DC motors, including servo motors and stepper motors. These work on the same principles, but operate a bit differently, so I'll be looking at those in future videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for future videos on electronics and maker projects.